Sometime later, Matt visits the great philosopher again and says, I need to know who to obey. So many people are attempting to tell me what laws, orders, rules, and teachings to obey. Can you give me a clear lesson helping me to know how to know what orders that emanate from behind the veil of experience I should obey? Can I not simply use a simple decision-making mechanism? Can I just do what seems to lead to happiness? Can you answer this question without jargon in a way a third-grade student could understand and use the teaching the rest of their lives? The philosopher smiles at Matt's question, recognizing the need for clear guidance. Of course, Matt, when it comes to deciding which orders and teachings to follow, there are a few principles that can be helpful. First and foremost, it is important to consider the impact of your actions on yourself and others. Will the action you are considering cause harm or suffering to anyone else? Will it bring you lasting happiness or satisfaction, or only temporary pleasure? Secondly, it is important to reflect on your own values and ethical principles. What do you believe is right and wrong, just and unjust? Does the action you are considering align with your own moral compass? Finally, it is important to seek knowledge and understanding and to be open to learning from different perspectives and experiences. This may involve questioning your own assumptions and biases and being willing to listen to those who hold different beliefs and values. In terms of a simple decision-making mechanism, you could ask yourself the following questions. Is this action kind and compassionate towards myself and others? Is it aligned with my own ethical principles and values? Will it bring me lasting happiness and fulfillment, or only temporary pleasure? By reflecting on these questions and seeking to act with kindness, compassion, and integrity, you can live a fulfilling and meaningful life while also contributing to the well-being of those around you. The philosopher pauses for a moment, then adds, Remember, Matt, the decisions you make and the actions you take have a ripple effect on the world around you. By acting with mindfulness and consideration, you can help to create a better and more just society for all. Matt nods, feeling a sense of clarity and purpose. Thank you, sir. Your words have provided me with a simple yet powerful framework for making ethical decisions and living a meaningful life. The philosopher smiles his eyes shining with warmth and compassion. It is my pleasure to help, Matt. May you continue on your path of seeking knowledge and understanding and always strive to act with kindness and integrity. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, if we do not know the reality of anything beyond our present moment experience with absolute certainty, why then should I give the orders and directives from any theoretical being any value at all? Moreover, if I do not know the reality of any being or thing. Beyond myself, why should me guesses to the effects upon their unknown realities weigh so heavily in my decision-making? Please keep your answer simple so my children might understand. The philosopher takes a moment to consider Matt's question, recognizing its complexity. A good question, Matt. It is true that as human beings we can only know and perceive so much. We cannot know with absolute certainty the nature of any being or thing beyond our present moment experience. However, we can still make educated guesses based on what we do know and use that to inform our decision-making. For example, if we observe that certain actions tend to cause harm or suffering to others, we can infer that they are likely to have similar effects on other beings or things, even if we cannot know their full reality. As for orders and directives from theoretical beings, their value depends on the beliefs and values of the individual. Some people may find comfort and guidance in following the teachings of a particular religious or spiritual tradition, while others may rely on reason and personal experience to guide their actions. In the end, the most important thing is to act with compassion, kindness, and integrity towards yourself and others, and to seek understanding and knowledge to inform your decisions. Whether or not one believes in the reality of any being or thing beyond themselves, the impact of their actions on the world around the them philosopher is real smiles, and tangible. hoping his words have provided some clarity to Matt and his children. I hope that helps, Matt. Remember, the most important thing is to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others, and to always strive for greater understanding and knowledge. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, I wish to talk to you about my human experience. I, a full and complete way, including my struggles with human passions. The philosopher nods, sensing the importance of this conversation for Matt. 
Of course, Matt, your human experience is complex and multifaceted, and it is important to explore all aspects of it, including your struggles with human passion. Passions or strong emotions such as love, anger, fear and joy are an integral part of the human experience. They can bring both pleasure and pain, and can be both a source of strength and a source of strength and a source of vulnerability. It is important to acknowledge and accept your passions, while also recognizing their potential to cloud your judgment and lead to harmful actions. Self-reflection and introspection can be helpful in understanding and managing your passions. This may involve examining the root causes of your emotions and identifying any patterns or triggers that may be contributing to them. It may also involve developing healthy coping mechanisms such as mindfulness, meditation or therapy to help regulate your emotions and maintain emotional balance. Ultimately, the key to managing your passions is to cultivate self-awareness and self-control. By developing a deeper understanding of yourself and your emotions, you can make more conscious and intentional choices and act with greater compassion and integrity towards yourself and others. The philosopher pauses, giving Matt a moment to absorb his words. Remember, Matt, your passions are a part of you, and there is no need to suppress or deny them. By embracing them with mindfulness and self-awareness, you can navigate the complexities of the human experience with greater wisdom and compassion. Matt nods, feeling grateful for the philosopher's guidance. Thank you for your wisdom, sir. It is comforting to know that my passions are a natural part of the human experience, and that with self-awareness and self-control, I can use them to navigate my journey through life with greater wisdom and compassion. The philosopher smiles warmly, his eyes shining with empathy and understanding. Indeed, Matt, embrace your passions with an open heart and a clear mind, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, First, I humbly request, can you please keep your answers to my questions shorter? The philosopher smiles apologetically. Of course, Matt. I apologize if my answers have been lengthy or difficult to understand. Please let me know if you have any specific questions or concerns, and I will do my best to provide a clear and concise response. Matt, ready. Matt says, I do not know the true nature of anything beyond myself, whether it is a rock or a human or a letter from the government telling me to do something. I have some information in my mind telling me that if I do certain things, certain other things will likely happen. In fact, I have a mind full of probabilities and theoretical relationships between things, and some of these can be correlated to what I do know with absolute certainty, this present moment experience. Yet, though I do not know the true nature of the world with certainty, I do know I have desire in this present moment. With absolute certainty, I know I feel a craving for the proximity of certain other essences around me. Those essences around me, those essences or energies seem to be inside certain human beings I perceive. I crave something about them, sometimes touch, sometimes some other form of communication. It is weird to crave. Things from things you do not know with certainty even exist, or whether they exist in any way like you perceive. How do you deal with such cravings? The philosopher nods, recognizing the complexity of the issue that Matt has presented. Cravings and desires are a natural part of the human experience and can arise in response to a variety of stimuli, including the proximity of other individuals. It is important to acknowledge and accept these cravings while also recognizing their potential to cloud our judgment and lead to harmful actions. Self-reflection and mindfulness can be helpful in understanding and managing our cravings, this may involve examining the root causes of our desires and identifying any patterns or triggers that may be contributing to them. It may also involve developing healthy coping mechanisms such as meditation, creative expression, or physical exercise to help manage and channel our desires in a healthy and constructive way. Ultimately, the key to managing our cravings is to cultivate self-awareness and self-control. By developing a deeper understanding of ourselves and our desires, we can make more conscious and intentional choices and act with greater compassion and integrity towards ourselves and others. The philosopher pauses, giving Matt a moment to absorb his words. Remember, Matt, your cravings are a part of you, and there is no need to suppress or deny them. By acknowledging and accepting them with mindfulness and self-awareness, 
you can navigate the complexities of the human experience with greater wisdom and compassion. Matt nods, feeling grateful for the philosopher's guidance. Thank you for your wisdom, sir. It is comforting to know that my cravings and desires are a natural part of the human experience, and that with self-awareness and self-control, I can use them to navigate my journey through life with greater wisdom and compassion. The philosopher smiles warmly, his eyes shining with empathy and understanding. Indeed, Matt, embrace your cravings and desires with an open heart and a clear mind, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Sometime Matt later, ready. Matt returns and says, How do you deal with the fact that you cannot know anything beyond the information you are spoon-fed by unknown forces in the universe? The philosopher takes a moment to consider Matt's question. It is true that as human beings, we are limited in our capacity to know and understand the full nature of the universe and its workings. We can only perceive and interpret the information that is available to us, and even that information may be incomplete or subject to interpretation. However, rather than feeling discouraged or defeated by this limitation, I choose to approach it with a sense of wonder and curiosity. The fact that there is so much that we don't know or understand is an invitation to continue exploring and learning and to remain humble in our understanding of the world around us. Additionally, I find solace in the interconnectedness of all things and in the belief that there is a deeper reality that transcends our individual experiences and perspectives. Whether we call this reality God, the universe, or something else entirely, it is a reminder that we are all part of a larger whole and that there is meaning and purpose to our existence beyond what we can comprehend. In short, I deal with the limitation of my knowledge by embracing the mystery and wonder of the universe and by approaching it with a sense of humility, curiosity, and awe. Matt nods, feeling inspired by the philosopher's words. Thank you for sharing your perspective, sir. It is reassuring to know that even in the face of uncertainty and limitation, there is still room for wonder and exploration. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt. May you continue to approach the mysteries of the universe with an open heart and a curious mind, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, It frustrates me that the universe seems deceptive with me. It seems that something around me intentionally warps the information I am given. It reminds me of the divine concept of the coyote power. The philosopher listens carefully to Matt's frustration, recognizing the difficulty of navigating a world that can seem confusing and deceptive at times. I understand your frustration, Matt. It can be challenging to feel like we are not getting the full or accurate picture of the world around us. However, it is important to remember that our perceptions and interpretations of the world are always filtered through our own individual experiences and perspectives. What one person perceives as deception or confusion another person may see as mystery or possibility. As for the concept of coyote power, it is a symbol of the trickster or deceiver in many Native American cultures and can represent the power of unpredictability and transformation. Rather than seeing this as a negative force, it can be seen as an invitation to embrace change and transformation and to approach the world with a sense of playfulness and curiosity. In short, while it is natural to feel frustrated or confused by the uncertainties of the world, it is important to approach it with a sense of openness and curiosity and to recognize the transformative power of uncertainty and mystery. Matt nods, feeling a sense of clarity and reassurance. Thank you, sir. Your words have provided me with a new perspective on the challenges of navigating the world around us. The philosopher smiles warmly. It is my pleasure, Matt. May you continue to approach the uncertainties of life with a sense of playfulness and curiosity and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, Suppose you were invited into a secret meeting with the most powerful leaders on your planet. In the secret meeting, the leaders ask for your honest counsel on many big topics. At the end, they thank you. They then emerge from the meeting and draft an Announcement for the entire planet. The announcement contains many decisions you strongly disagree with. They share the announcement with the world and include that you, the great philosopher, consulted with them to help them craft this thoughtful plan. The philosopher takes a moment to consider Matt's scenario. 
recognizing the difficulty of navigating conflicting values and expectations, if I were in this situation, I would first strive to understand the values and motivations of the leaders I was meeting with and to ensure that my counsel was aligned with those values and motivations. However, if the leaders ultimately made decisions that were in conflict with my own values and beliefs, I would need to carefully consider my response. On the one hand, I would not want to publicly distance myself from the leaders as that could damage my ability to continue to provide counsel and guidance to them in the future. On the other hand, I would not want to be associated with decisions that I fundamentally disagree with or believe to be harmful. In such a situation, I might consider privately expressing my concerns and objections to the leaders, while also acknowledging the limitations of my own perspective and recognizing that the ultimate decision-making power lies with them. I might also consider speaking out publicly about my own values and beliefs, while avoiding direct criticism of the leaders or their decisions. Ultimately, the key would be to approach the situation with a sense of integrity and authenticity while also recognizing the complex and often conflicting values and interests that are at play in any decision-making process. Matt nods, feeling a sense of admiration for the philosopher's thoughtful response. Thank you for your wisdom, sir. It is inspiring to see how you approach such difficult and complex situations with grace and integrity. The philosopher smiles warmly. It is my pleasure, Matt. May you continue to approach the challenges of life with an open heart and a clear mind, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, Is it important to you that you continue to be consulted with by great and powerful people? The philosopher considers Matt's question before answering. It is not important to me to be consulted by great and powerful people per se. What is important to me is the opportunity to provide guidance and counsel to those who seek it regardless of their status or influence. I believe that all individuals have the potential to grow and learn and that the act of providing guidance and support to others is a meaningful and fulfilling part of the human experience. Whether I am providing counsel to a powerful leader or a struggling individual, what matters most to me is the opportunity to connect with others, to learn from their experiences and to contribute to their growth and well-being. Of course, there is a certain sense of validation and recognition that comes with being consulted by great and powerful people, but that is not my primary motivation. Rather, my motivation is rooted in a deep desire to serve others and to make a positive difference in the world in whatever small way I can. Matt nods, feeling inspired by the philosopher's commitment to service and humility. Thank you, sir. Your words remind me of the importance of focusing on service and connection rather than external validation and recognition. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt, may you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of service and humility and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, You say it is not super important that powerful leaders consult with you, but in my previous theoretical question, you allowed the leaders to announce a plan you strongly disagree with but you did not clearly and loudly denounce their plan, even though you strongly disagreed with it. What if their plan was to do something horrible, like commit atrocities that cost lives of people, perhaps imprisoning anyone who did not share their beliefs about gods or the orbits of the planets? Would you still only privately message them, telling them you disagree, while in public withholding your criticism of the leaders? The philosopher pauses, taking Matt's hypothetical scenario seriously. If the leaders were planning to commit atrocities that cost lives or to imprison individuals based on their beliefs or other immutable characteristics, then my response would be different. In such a scenario, it would not be enough to privately express my concerns or objections. I would need to take more active and vocal steps to prevent or resist the implementation of such a plan. While it is true that I strive to approach all situations with a sense of humility and openness, there are certain values and principles that are non-negotiable, such as respect for human life and dignity and the right to freedom of thought and expression. If these values were being violated or threatened, I would feel compelled to speak out and take action, even if it meant risking my own safety or reputation. Ultimately, 
The key is to approach each situation with a sense of discernment and moral clarity, and to remain true to our core values and principles, even in the face of opposition or adversity, while the decision to speak out or take action may not always be easy or clear-cut, it is essential to it. Remaining true to ourselves and to our commitment to creating a more just and compassionate world. Matt nods, feeling a sense of clarity and inspiration from the philosopher's words. Thank you for your honesty and clarity, sir. It is reassuring to know that even in the face of difficult and complex situations, we can remain true to our core values and principles. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt, may you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of discernment and moral clarity, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, Continuing that previous scenario I mentioned last time we met, please imagine the people of your planet have invited you to speak over a microphone that will reach all ears on Earth. A person asks you why did you help advise these leaders to commit themselves. Atrocities in that secret meeting? Why didn't you say things during that secret meeting to stop them? They tell us in that secret meeting you advised them in a manner that contributed to their current horrible plan. What did you say to them in that meeting? Why did you not try harder to stop these atrocities? What would you say? The philosopher takes a deep breath and considers Matt's scenario, recognizing the gravity of the accusations and the potential consequences of his response. If I were confronted with such a question, I would first want to clarify that I did not, in fact, advise the leaders to commit atrocities and that I spoke out against any actions that were in conflict with my values and principles. If it were true that I had failed to speak out or take action to prevent atrocities, I would need to acknowledge my mistake and take responsibility for my inaction. I would express my deep regret for any harm that was caused as a result of my failure to act and commit to taking more active steps in the future to prevent such atrocities from occurring. However, I would also want to emphasize that the situation was not as simple as it may appear. There are often complex and competing interests and values at play in any decision-making process, and it is not always easy or straightforward to determine the best course of action, while I would never condone or support atrocities. I also recognize that there are often limitations to what any individual can do to prevent them. In short, I would seek to be honest and transparent about my actions and decisions, while also acknowledging the complexity and difficulty of the situation at hand. Ultimately, my goal would be to learn from my mistakes, take responsibility for my actions, and work towards creating a more just and compassionate world in whatever small way I can. Matt nods, feeling a sense of respect and admiration for the philosopher's commitment to honesty and responsibility. Thank you for your words, sir. Your humility and willingness to take responsibility for your actions is inspiring. The philosopher smiles warmly. It is my pleasure, Matt. May you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of honesty and responsibility and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, Suppose then you are invited by the leaders of the world to enter into another secret meeting with the leaders to discuss more big decisions. There will be no witnesses or records kept of the meeting. What is your response to your invite? The philosopher takes a moment to consider Matt's scenario, recognizing the complexity and potential risks involved in secret meetings with powerful leaders. If I were invited to participate in another secret meeting with the leaders of the world, I would need to carefully consider the potential benefits and risks of accepting the invitation. On the one hand, the opportunity to provide guidance and counsel to those in positions of power can be a meaningful way to make a positive impact on the world. However, it is also important to consider the potential risks and ethical implications of participating in secret meetings that may not be transparent or accountable to the public. Ultimately, my decision would depend on the specific circumstances of the meeting and the values and principles that guide my actions. If I believed that my participation would contribute to a more just and compassionate world and that the risks and ethical concerns were outweighed by the potential benefits, I might choose to accept the invitation. However, if I felt that my participation would compromise my values or put others at risk, I would need to decline the invitation. Regardless of my decision, 
It is important to approach each situation with a sense of discernment and moral clarity and to remain true to our core values and principles, even in the face of powerful and tempting influences. Matt nods, feeling a sense of clarity and reassurance from the philosopher's thoughtful response. Thank you, sir. Your words remind me of the importance of staying true to our values and principles, even in the face of difficult and complex decision. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt, may you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of discernment and moral clarity, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Sometime later, Matt returns and says, what if after every secret meeting you have with the leaders, they almost always misstate the facts of what was said and discussed at those said and discussed at those secret meetings, always sharing a narrative with the world you find offensively inaccurate and even dishonest? Continue to attend such meetings. What if you had a legal right to record those meetings you attend on a recording device, which you could use to ensure the world was given an accurate account of everything at those meetings? You also had the legal right to share the recordings with the world. Would you perhaps tell them you will attend but will exercise your right to record it? The philosopher pauses, recognizing the potential risks and ethical implications of attending secret meetings where the facts are often misrepresented to the public. If the leaders were consistently misrepresenting the facts of our meetings and using those misrepresentations to shape public opinion in a dishonest or manipulative way, I would be deeply concerned. I would need to consider the potential risks and benefits of continuing to attend such meetings and whether my presence was actually contributing to positive change. If I had a legal right to record the meetings and to share those recordings with the world, I might consider exercising that right as a way to ensure that the public was given an accurate account of what was discussed. However, I would also need to consider the potential risks and consequences of sharing such recordings, particularly if doing so would jeopardize my safety or put others at risk. Ultimately, my decision would depend on the specific circumstances of the meetings and the values and principles that guide my actions, while the opportunity to provide guidance and counsel to those in power can be a meaningful way to create positive change. It is important to do so in a way that is transparent, ethical, and accountable to the public. Matt nods, feeling a sense of respect and admiration for the philosopher's commitment to transparency and accountability. Thank you for your thoughtful response, sir. Your words remind me of the importance of standing up for truth and transparency, even in the face of powerful and manipulative forces. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt, may you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of truth and transparency, and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt, ready. Matt returns and says, once upon a time, there was a man named Matt Reddy who was part of the Jefferson Healthcare Commission. He liked to record the meetings to help him remember what was discussed. However, the hospital had to keep the recordings for seven years because of the law. The hospital also had to share the recordings if anyone asked for them. This was called the Open Public Record Act. The council recommended that the hospital should record the meetings so it could be managed properly, and they had their own copy. However, Matt Reddy wanted to continue recording the meetings because he thought it was his right to do so as a private citizen. He was a commissioner, but he also had personal rights. The hospital had a duty to keep the recordings and share them if anyone asked for them. But Matt Reddy had the right to record the meetings. It was a challenging situation because both the hospital and Matt Reddy were right. The philosopher listens carefully to Matt's story, recognizing the complexity of the situation and the clash of competing rights and duties. It seems that in this scenario, there are multiple rights and duties at play which can create challenges and conflicts. While the hospital has a duty to keep the recordings and share them if asked, Matt Reddy also has a right to record the meetings as a private citizen. However, it is also important to consider the potential consequences of each action. While Matt Reddy may have the right to record the meetings, doing so may create additional work and potential legal issues for the hospital. On the other hand, not recording the meetings may create challenges for Matt Reddy in terms of accurately remembering what was discussed. In such situations, it is important to approach the problem with a sense of balance and discernment, recognizing that there may not be a clear-cut solution. It may be necessary to consider the potential consequences of each action and to work collaboratively with others to find a solution that 
balances competing rights and duties. Ultimately, the key is to remain true to our values and principles, and to strive to act with love and compassion towards ourselves and others, even in the face of difficult and complex situations. Matt nods, feeling a sense of clarity and reassurance from the philosopher's thoughtful response. Thank you, sir. Your words remind me of the importance of balancing competing rights and duting rights and duties and working collaboratively to find solutions to complex problems. The philosopher smiles warmly. Indeed, Matt, may you continue to approach the challenges of life with a sense of balance and discernment and always strive to act with love and compassion towards yourself and others. Matt says, here is a movie about a real experience I attempted to make an accurate record of all words spoken. I think I achieved 90s accuracy, March 19, 2014, Jefferson Healthcare Commission meeting, transcript of dialogue, Marie Dressler, calling the meeting to order at 3.33. This is Jefferson County Public Hospital District N2, Board of Commissioners meeting and Commissioners meeting and Commissioner Jill Buller is excused. Could I ask you what is in front of you? Are you recording this meeting? Matt Reddy. Yes, I'm making an audio recording of this meeting to help me remember what has happened. Marie Dressler, okay? Actually, that sounds like a good opening for discussion about doing something like that with one of the concerns with the Public Meetings Act as it is being recorded and the public hospital district is responsible for safekeeping and so it can all be accessed. Maybe this is something that you ought to step in Young Clear 0055. Mike Glenn, yeah, I think that... I believe there was going to be a discussion at tonight's meeting about recording board meetings, which I think is a reasonable thing to discuss. There are implications associated with recording board meetings that recording become part of the record and is also part of the Open Public Meeting Act and Records Act. So a recording provided by a hospital, a hospital recording for the purpose of records has to be disclosed when requested and any recording by a board member, according to council, would be considered that official record. So I think what the discussion tonight was going to go along the lines of discussing it at the board level, and then if the board is interested in pursuing that to direct administration to develop a policy, a procedure, and a methodology to make sure that we do it correctly, we, our Record Retention Act and Open Public Meeting Response Team, and we do it right. So I think the recommendation from council is that if I absent of the hospital doing it, that a board member should not. Matt Reddy. Well, based on my research, I don't think that's accurate. I mean, this is a public meeting. Citizens have a certain right to record these meetings. I don't surrender that right because I'm a commissioner, just like we each have the right to vote. You know, we have certain rights, the right to breathe, the right to breathe, the right to take notes. I don't think it's disagree with that assessment of what is legal or that this constitutes a board act. This is an act as a private citizen. Mike Glenn. Well, it might be an act of a private citizen, but because of your, because you're a board member, just like the notes you take at a board meeting, they are subject to the open public. Matt Reddy, sure. Mike Glenn, record act so that any tape that you record is also subject to that act, so it becomes part of the record and it's the recommendation from council looking after the interests of the organization that if Jefferson Healthcare begins to record our meetings, that it be done so. Administration so that we have the tape, we have the record, we can properly store it, and we can respond to any open public meeting requests that may come down the pipe, because it's a big thing. Some hospitals do indeed record their meetings, and it adds another layer of complexity to responding to open public record requests. So I think at the asks, I think the discussion with the rest of the board is, is this something that we want to pursue? And then secondly, if we are going to do it, to do it right and to counsel, I don't think anyone is suggesting, as an individual citizen, you don't have the right to make the recording, but as a board member, Council for Jefferson Healthcare is recommending you don't, in the interest of the organization and all of the implications. Matt Reddy. Is the Council recommending me not record meetings? Mike Glenn. Until we have a policy and a procedure to make sure we can manage that recording in compliance with the Open Public Record Act, that we don't do it because it's discretionary. Organizations don't have to do it. And further, what I think was going to happen, Matt, was that there was going to be a discussion with the other members of the board should decide if that indeed is the direction that they were going to give administration. Matt Reddy, I appreciate the recommendation of council, but I'm going to continue recording the meeting.
I think it's a perfectly appropriate decision, and I would completely support the board if we wanted to officially do it, and I'm happy to give if you feel like you need a copy to store for seven years. I'm happy to provide that. Mike Glenn. Well, it's not like I feel like it. The law would require it and the recommendation from council is that if a recording is made on behalf of the organization and as a commissioner, you would be making it on behalf of the organization that we have our own recording. Marie Dressler. So I will recess this board meeting at 3.39 to see if we can locate a recording, some recording device, and if not, we will just have to schedule a special meeting. Thank you. To pause. Marie Dressler. Inaudible at 3.43, I will reconvene the meeting, the meeting, East Inaudible Hospital District, N2. I continue our meeting. Tony DeLeo, Madam Chairman, if you would, home clear 075, that Commissioner Reddy is no longer recording the meeting. After the silence, the philosopher says, it seems that in this situation, both the hospital and Matt Reddy had valid concerns and rights. However, the hospital had a legal obligation to keep and share the recordings if requested, which is why they recommended that the recordings be made by the recordings be made by the hospital itself. While it is understandable that Matt Reddy wanted to make his own recording for his own personal use, it may not have been the best decision given the legal implications and potential complications it could cause. It is important to consider the legal and ethical implications of our actions, even if it may inconvenience us personally. Matt replies, I didn't want the recordings only for personal use. I also needed them for accurate, honest use and professional use as a hospital commissioner. I could not do my job competently without it. The philosopher nods and responds, I understand your reasoning, but it is important to consider the potential consequences of recording the meetings on your own. The hospital had a legal obligation to keep and share the recordings, which is why they recommended that the recordings be made by the recordings be made by the hospital itself. It may have been better to work with the hospital to ensure that the recordings were managed properly and accurately instead of recording the meetings on your own. It is important to consider the legal and ethical implications of our actions and work together towards a solution that satisfies everyone's needs. Sometime later, Matt returns and asks, Do you think there are unseen beings listening to every wire you and I are saying to one another right now? And are they good, noble, honest beings with a sound epistemology for rationally interpreting reality, always lurking unseen, always hiding their true selves to you and me? The philosopher thinks for a moment before responding, it is possible that there are beings that we cannot see or hear that are listening to us, but it is also important to not let fear or paranoia control our thoughts and actions. It is important to focus on what we do know and what we can control in our present moment experience. As for the nature of these beings, we cannot say for certain without more evidence or experience. We can only work with what we do know and strive to make rational interpretations of reality based on our own experiences and understanding. Sometime later, Matt asks, let us consider the current mainstream narrative of human history. Let us assume as a thought experiment that a being during human history was able to fully control a human body without fear or concern about physical discomfort, who in human history may have benefited most by having such a safety and seemed to behave very courageously. The philosopher takes a moment to reflect on the question and replies, it is difficult to say for certain who may have benefited the most, as there have been many individuals throughout human history who have demonstrated great courage and leadership in the face of danger, however some possible. Examples could be individuals such as Mahatma Gandhi, who used non-violent resistance to fight for Indian independence, or Martin Luther King Jr., who fought for civil rights for African Americans in the United States. Both of these individuals faced significant danger and risked their own safety in their efforts to bring about positive change in the world. Ultimately, the ability to control a human body without fear or concern for physical discomfort would not necessarily guarantee success in achieving such goals, as it also requires a strong sense of conviction, determination, and strategic thinking. Think.